Today we're going to be working on solving quadratic equations using two methods. One is quadratic formula and completing the square. So most of the quadratic equations that we're going to be working on are non-factorable. So we're going to find its solutions using these two methods. So let's begin with quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b, or opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And to solve the first problem, we have 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 equal to 0. So we have a equals 2, b equals negative 5, and c equals now by applying the formula, we have x equals opposite of b, positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4, a, c, all over 2, a. So by simplifying our formula, we'll have 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 24 all over 4 and now we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 all over 4. Now we know that the square root of 1 is just 1 so we'll end up with 5 plus or minus 1 all over 4 and in this case since we can still further simplify our expression or our solution we can split this into 2 and we'll end up with write it on right here, 5 plus 1 all over 4, and 5 minus 1 all over 4. So these are the two plus, um, solutions that we're going to be working on. So 5 plus 1 is 6 all over 4, or 3 all over 2, and 5 minus 1 which is 4 over 4, or 1. So the two solutions of our quadratic equation will be 2, 3, all over 2, and 1. So these are the two solutions of the first quadratic equation. Now let's go ahead and answer problem number 2 using the same method. We're going to be working on number 2, which gives us 2x squared minus x minus 4 equal to 2. So first we need to equate this to 0, so we're subtracting 2 on both sides, leaving us with 2x squared minus x minus 6 equal to 0. And in this case, a is equal to 2, b is negative 1, and c is negative 6. And using the quadratic formula, we'll have x equals opposite of b, positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And by simplifying our expression, we'll have x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1. And since we have two negatives, we know that we're going to end up adding the expressions so 4 times 2 times 6 is going to give us 48 all over 4. And by further simplifying this, we'll end up with the square root of 49, which happens to be a perfect square. So we'll end up with 1 plus 7 all over 4 and 1 minus 7 all over 4. So we'll have 8 over 4, which gives us 2. And... 1 minus 7, which is negative 6 all over 4, or negative 3 all over 2. So these are the two solutions for problem number 2 using the quadratic formula. And let's go ahead and answer the last two problems. So for number 3, we'll have 8x squared minus 4x might equal to 1. So by equating this to 0, We'll subtract 1 on both sides, leaving us with ax squared minus 4x minus 1 equal to 0. Now, we're ready to use the formula, where a is 8, b is negative 4, and c is equal to negative 1. And by using the
quadratic formula, x equals opposite of b, which is positive 4, plus or minus b squared minus 4, a, c, all over 2, a. So we'll have 4, 16, 2 negatives is positive, and 4 times 8 is equal to 32 all over 2 times 8, which is 16. Now, if we simplify this further, 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 32 is equal to 48, all over 16. And we know that 48 can be factored out with um, a perfect square, so we can simplify this further. So we'll end up with 4 plus or minus the square root of the factors of 48 that is a perfect square would be uh, 16 times 3. So you need to really know your multiplication table or you can also do your tree diagram or your prime factorization to produce the factors which is a perfect square. So we'll end up with 4 plus or minus 4 squared of 3 all over 16. And in this particular um, case, of our function, we know that we can further simplify this because 4, 4, and 16 can still be simplified by dividing each term by 4. So we'll end up with 1 plus or minus 1, we can write 1 if you want to, square root of 3 all over 4. And this will be the solution, solution set for our um, problem number 3, 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 all over 4. You can or uh, you may or may not put the 1 in your answer, but both of them are just the same. So for number 4, for the last problem, we'll have 8x cubed, I mean squared, plus 6x equals negative 5. And by equating it to 0, we'll add 5 on both sides, so we'll have 8x squared plus 6x plus 5 equal to 0. So a is 8, b is 6, and c is equal to 5. So in this equation, we'll have x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a and by simplifying it we'll have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 and this is just minus and 4 times 8 times 5 is equal to 160 equal to or all over 2 times 8 which is equal to 16 and by further simplifying this we know that we'll have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 160 is negative 124 all over 16. Now in this case we're going to end up with an imaginary number because we have a negative um, square root or a negative inside the square root so we'll have to simplify this into negative 6 plus or minus i, square root of 124, all over 16. And 124, if we simplify this as a perfect square as a factor, which is 4 times 31, so we'll end up with negative 6 plus or minus um, 4 and 31 is square root of 4 is 2, so we'll have 2i, square root of 31, all over 16. And since 6, 2 and 16 are still factorable, we'll end up with negative 3 plus or minus i squared of 31 all over 16 divided by 2 is 8. So this is our solution for the last problem. So again, the square root of 124 can be simplified into 4 times 31 and that's how we are able to simplify 2i square root of 31 and this is how we solve 
quadratic equation using um, the quadratic formula. And for the last set, we're going to use another method, which is the completing the square technique. And we're going to find the solution set for number one using completing the square. So we have x squared plus 14x minus 38 equal to zero. So your first step is to cancel or to um, take away the constant of your quadratic equation. So we'll add 38 on both sides. And this time we're going to rewrite it as x squared plus 14x plus a box equal to 38 plus another box. And in this case, we're going to I'll find our perfect square trinomial by completing the square and the number that we're looking for to complete the square is going to be half of the middle term which is 7 and then square it which is 49. So 49 is the number that we're going to use to complete the square because if we have x squared plus 14x plus 49 the factors of 49 that gives you uh, 14 when you add them up is 7 and 7. Now you have a perfect square trinomial equal to 38 plus 99 is equal to 87. I'm sorry, 49, not 99. 40, 38 plus 49 is equal to 87. So we'll have to simplify this and we can change this or modify the function into x plus 7 squared equals 87. So this is the first half of our um, method in completing the square. The second half is to solve for x by taking the square root of our solution. So we have x plus 7 squared equals 87. So to get rid of the square, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And we'll end up with x plus 7 equals plus or minus square root of 87. And 87 doesn't have a factor that will give you a perfect square, so we'll just write it as square root of 87. So by subtracting 7 on both sides, we'll have x equals negative 7 plus or minus 87. And this is the first solution set of our function for quadratic equation using completing the square technique. Now let's go ahead and answer problem number two. And on number two we have x squared plus 6x minus 59 equals zero. So let's put it up a little bit. And just like what we did, we're going to get rid of the constant. So we have x squared plus 6x plus a box equal to positive 59 plus another box. Now to complete the square, half of 6 is equal to 3 and then when you square it is 9. So you'll have 9 as the number that will complete the square. So it will give us x plus 3 times x plus 3 as our factors and 59 plus 9 is going to give us um, 68 as our sum. So we'll have to simplify this into x plus 3 squared equals 68. Now that we're done with the first part, we're going to solve for x. x plus 3 squared equals 68. And by taking the square root of both sides, plus or minus, we'll have x plus 3 equals the plus or minus square root of 68. And 68 is... Um, factorable and the two factors of 68 that will give you a perfect square would be 4 and 17. So 4 times 17 is going to give you 68. So by simplifying this we'll have x plus 3 equals plus or minus 2 square root of 17 because the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So by isolating x, we'll subtract 3 on both sides. And we'll have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 17. So the challenging part in completing the square is sometimes a find, finding the simplest form of your square roots. And that's problem number 3.
we have x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals negative 5. So just like what we did, we're going to get rid of the constant by the x squared, leaving us with x squared minus 4x plus a box equal to negative 6 plus another box. And to complete the square, um, half of negative 4 is negative 2, and the square of it is positive 4. So that's the number that we're going to add on both sides. So we'll end up with x minus 2 times x minus 2 equal to negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So by simplifying our binomial, we'll have x minus 2 squared equal to negative 2. And now by solving for x, we'll have x minus 2 squared equals negative 2. Taking the square root of both sides, notice that we have a negative inside our square root. So we'll end up with i square root of 2 so that we'll have an imaginary number or complex number in our solution. So by adding 2 on both sides, we'll have our x equal to 2 plus or minus i square root of. And now we have uh, the solutions of the quadratic equations that ended up with a complex number. And for the last problem, we have x squared plus 2x equals negative 20. This is number 4. And to solve this quadratic or, um, equation, there's no more constant in our equation. So what we're going to do is just to add the number that will complete the square and that number half of 2 is 1 and square of it is 1 so we'll end up with x plus 1 squared equals negative 19 so that's our um, completed square so the second part is to solve for x by taking the square root of both sides and we'll end up with an imaginary number. So we'll have x plus 1 equals plus or minus i square root of 19. And since 19 is not factorable with a perfect square, we'll just leave it like that. So by subtracting 1 on both sides, we'll have x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 19. And this is our solution for problem number 3.